theorem to determine whether or not a non-trivial homomorphism may exist between two groups of interest. So here's the next problem that we'll tackle. Can there be a non-trivial homomorphism uh, from the group D8, sorry, D6, to the group Z4? So a dihedral group of the hexagon uh, to the cyclic group of order four. We're gonna use that same strategy that we used in the last video. And that strategy is to list all the normal subgroups of the domain and list all of the subgroups of the target group. The normal subgroups of the domain are our candidate kernels. Our subgroups of the target group are our candidate images. So we'll list them all. For D6, there are five normal subgroups. I'll just list them all here. Their orders are one, two, three, six, and 12. Z4, meanwhile, because it's a cyclic group, it's easy to list all of its subgroups because they're cyclic as well. We have the cyclic subgroup, which is the whole group. Uh, we have the cyclic subgroup generated by two, and we have the trivial subgroup. So we'll play an order game. The orders of these subgroups are respectively one, two, three, six, and 12, the normal subgroups of D6, four, two, and one, the subgroups of Z4. And then for each of my normal subgroups, I wanna find what the order of the factor group by that normal subgroup would be, which again, Lagrange's theorem tells us is just equal to the index of these normal subgroups inside of D6, and therefore it's equal to the quotient of the order of D6 divided by the order of my subgroup. So 12 divided by one, 12 divided by two, 12 divided by three, by six, by 12. Here are the orders of my factor groups. Here are the orders of my candidate image subgroups. And the first isomorphism theorem tells me that if there is any homomorphism between these two groups, then the order of the factor group by the kernel has to agree with the order of the image subgroup in the target group. So there's three possibilities. Those orders are four, those orders are two, or those orders are one. Let's see what the consequences of each of those are. If the orders are both equal to one, then that means the image consists only of the identity element of Z4, so my homomorphism is trivial, and so we keep looking because we're looking for non-trivial homomorphisms. Okay, what about the option that's on top here? Remember, if the kernel is the identity element only, if, it's, if the kernel is trivial, then that means that my homomorphism is one to one. But clearly that's not able to happen here because I don't have a 12 over here that I can match up this order of 12 factor group with. So my function can't be one to one. We would have known that anyway because D6 has more elements than Z4. So the pigeonhole principle tells us that any function, regardless of whether it's a homomorphism from D6 to Z4, cannot be one to one. But can it be onto? So can I have an onto homomorphism from D6 to Z4? If I did, that means that its image would be all of Z4. And therefore that the, uh, the quotient, the factor group of D6 by this normal subgroup would have to be isomorphic to this image according to the first isomorphism theorem. Can that be the case? And I'm gonna argue the answer is no. Because if the image is isomorphic to Z4, it means that the image is a cyclic group over here on, on the right hand side. But if the image is a cyclic group, that means that the factor group, g mod the kernel of phi, has to be cyclic as well. But in our previous video, we checked that the image, uh, sorry, that the factor group of g by this normal subgroup is actually not cyclic. It's actually Klein 4, z2 direct product z2. It's actually a more general reason why we could have known that. I call it the nifty center theorem uh, that we're gonna talk about in another video from now. Um, but, so it's not cyclic. And yet the image is a cyclic group in this case. So since those would otherwise need to be isomorphic, that's not possible. Right? The first isomorphism theorem says that the factor group has to be isomorphic to the image. But here, if the image is Z4 and the factor group is Z2 direct product Z2, we can't have that. Those two groups are not isomorphic. So we cannot have a non-trivial homomorphism that goes on to Z4 from D6. So the only possibility is maybe we have a homomorphism whose image is the two element subgroup 0, 2. And that one again does end up working because there's only one group up to isomorphism that has two elements. It's the cyclic group Z mod two. And so the image is gonna be isomorphic to Z mod two. The factor group, because it has two elements, will also be isomorphic to Z mod two. And so this one seems to work. So there is one and only one non-trivial homomorphism from D6 to Z4. It's the one which is gonna send all of my rotations, all of my orientation preserving symmetries of the hexagon, it's gonna send those all to zero. And then it's gonna send all of my reflections, the orientation reversing symmetries of the hexagon, those are all getting sent to the number two. So if you like, t to the i, r to the j is getting sent to two times i mod four. So when i is zero, we have rotations, we're getting sent to zero. When i is one, we have reflections, so we're getting sent to two. 
So there's only one non-trivial homomorphism between these two groups. And just doing an accounting for the possible kernels and the possible images using the first isomorphism theorem uh, by relating them to the factor groups is how we tell that story.